A retro diving helmet appears. A pickaxe flies into the picture. Question marks appear above the helmet. Exploration explained. Students talking about deep sea mining. Episode 6. Life in the deep sea. Did you imagine the bottom of the ocean to be boring? Empty, maybe just stone, sand or mud? At least scientists thought so for a very long time. But today we know better. When the Alvin a research submarine discovered the hydrothermal vents in 1977, they found plenty of life. Remember the guys from last episode that shoot a lot of chemicals into the water and form those sulfuric big smokers? A sketch of black smokers is drawn. Loads of animals live on them. You can find those giant tube worms. They can be taller than an adult human. A drawing of tube worms appears at the base of a black smoker. In the upper left corner, a photograph of tube worms is displayed. There are fields of deep sea horse mussels. Thousands of white shrimp. A drawing of a small horse mussel bat and a shrimp swarm appears. As Amelie talks, the photograph is switched to display the animal Amelie is currently talking about. They don't have eyes, I mean, sure, why would you need eyes if it's constantly dark, right? You'll see deep sea crabs called Yeti crabs, because they look so fluffy. A drawing and photo of the Yeti crab appear. Its long calipads and walking legs are covered with dense sidi, making the crab appear hairy. There are anemones. You might even encounter an octopus or a fish. A drawing and photo of anemones appear. Further, the sketch is extended by an octopus and a fish. Skates, they are closely related to the rays, lay their eggs on warm rocks around the vents for incubation. A drawing and photo of a skate appear. Next to the skate, two yellow eggs are drawn. Well, but how can life exist so far away from the sunlight? You know how plants use the energy of the sun to perform photosynthesis and thus provide the nutrients for all the animals and therefore create the basis of life? But sun will never reach the hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the ocean. Never mind, they found a different way. Remember those tube worms I've showed you? From the sketch of tube worms, a single individuum is outlined. The outlined animal is drawn again in an enlarged size. They don't have a mouth or an anus. They only have a lung to breathe in the chemicals of the surrounding water. And that's very rich in a chemical called hydrogen sulfide. The chemical formula H2S, symbolizing the hydrogen sulfide molecules, appears next to the worm. Now, they have millions of bacteria sitting in their guts. That's called a trophosome. An enlarged view of a section of the gut is drawn. Bacteria are sitting inside the trophosomal tissue. Safe and warm, using up this energy-rich chemical and producing sugar. A glucose molecule is drawn, and an arrow points from H to S to glucose. This is called chemosynthesis. The worm can use this sugar, someone can eat the worm, etc. Just like plants at the surface, they create the basis of a highly diverse ecosystem at the hydrothermal vents. But not only at the black smokers, also on the manganese nodules and cobalt crusts, you can find loads of life. A sketch of two stone-shaped manganese nodules is drawn. Here, they don't have those hot, energy-spitting ovens, so they have to live of whatever falls through the water column to the ocean floor. It's a harsh life, and the animals have to be highly adapted. For example, on the nodules, you can find anemones, sponges and all kinds of coral growing on the hard substrate. An anemone sits on one of the nodules and a sponge and a white coral appear next to it. Around them, octopuses, sea stars, or crabs make their way over the muddy sediment and rocks, even purple sea slugs. The sketch is extended by an octopus, a sea star, a crab sitting on a nodule, and a bright purple sea slug. Photos of the animals appear, as Amelie mentions them. And in the soil, live all kinds of microbes digesting the fallen detritus. The view zooms in on the seafloor next to the nodules and variously shaped microbes pop up. This ecosystem is not only fascinating, it's also crucial 
for the life on the surface. How? By digesting the leftovers from, for example, dead animals. A dead fish appears amidst the microbes. They remineralize the fixed carbon. Red arrows point from the fish to seas to illustrate the release of carbon. So that it can be used again for primary production like photosynthesis at the surface. So, you see, down on the ocean seafloor, it's not all boring or empty. The life down there is very diverse, creative and dependent on the special environment. If you want to know more about the strange but beautiful creatures in the unique ecosystem of the deep ocean floor, check out the articles and videos in the links below. Also, if you have any questions, just type them in the comments. In the next episode, I'm going to interview Alyssa Stola. She's a marine biologist at the University of Edinburgh and a whale biologist. How deep can whales dive? Might they be impacted by deep sea mining? What are big whales? Stay tuned and listen to those and many more interesting answers. References Howard et al. 2020 an assessment of the risks and impacts of seabed mining on marine ecosystems. Children's book, authored by Maria Baker, Anna Hilario, Hannah Lilly, Anna Mitaxas and Eva Ramirez Liodra, 2020, Treasures of the Deep. Vendover, 2000, The Ecology of Deep Sea Hydrothermal Vents. Fisher, Takai and Libris, 2007, Hydrothermal Vent Ecosystems. Smith et al., 2008, Abyssal Food Limitation, Ecosystem Structure and Climate Change. Rex and Etter, 2010, Deep Sea Biodiversity, Pattern and Scale. Kavanagh et al., 2006, Marine Chemosynthetic Symbiosis. Baker et al., 2010, Biogeography, Ecology and Vulnerability of Chemosynthetic Ecosystems in the Deep Sea. Thank you to Geoma ROV Kiel 6000 and Mberry for the photographs. Thank you to Tristan Schwartow for designing the logo. A student's project which has been developed in the framework of the Ocean Sustainability Master Course of Kiel University and Geomar Kiel, under the supervision of Professor Dr. Martin Wisbeck and Dr. Franziska Werner. April to September 2020. Amelie Laute, Larissa Scholz, Ariane Tepas. The Exploration Explained logo appears 